Being out in nature on a rainy day can provide many opportunities for a good photo. Overcast lighting conditions will typically be ideal for macro or close-ups. And water drops can add something special even on a mundane subject. On days like this I use a rain cover for my camera and lenses. I wear a rain poncho that is large enough to cover my camera bag on my back. And I wear flip-flops or sandals because I love splashing in puddles and feeling the cold water running over my feet. This cluster of leaves may look dark and boring at first glance, but if you look closely, you will notice there are different shades of green and the stems have a reddish colour. Shooting at the maximum aperture for this macro lens helps to blend and blur these colours together in the background, and moving more eye level or even pointing the lens up towards the light helps make the water drop stand out, and this lights up the small scene. A slower shutter speed also helps blur out any visible falling raindrops. Of course you can play with the shutter speed if you want to see the rain falling. Each raindrop that falls can quickly change a small scene you're focusing on. And it's fun to watch how much water one petal or leaf can hold before the water falls off. As much as I was enjoying the rain, it was coming down a little too much for the kinds of photos I wanted to take. I found a place where I thought I would enjoy watching the rain fall and waited for the showers to pass. When it cleared up, I switched to my 100-400mm lens because I could see some things out of reach that I wanted to bring closer. I love aquatic plants, and the marsh pennywort mixed in with the bamboo-like horsetail, also known as snake grass, caught my eye. There weren't many open water lilies, but the three near the middle of the pond looked totally different when I walked around. From another angle they appeared to be more of a cluster. I liked that better. The lotus are blooming. This is such a lovely scene, wonderful to look at, not so easy to photograph. I gave it a couple of tries and this is as close as I could get. Perhaps it was the direction of the light, but I'm not quite happy with the way these look. Also, one of the petals is covering the center of the flower in an awkward way. That's okay. I'll just pull back and take one more photo so I can remember this scene and I'll walk around to the other side of the pond. Most of the time when I compose my images, I put the subject off center. Sometimes I even place the subject far over with lots of negative space. This time I wanted to fill the frame more because this splendid flower is huge and deserves to be seen close up. Unfortunately the placement of the petals are still not quite perfect there in the center, but it's much better than earlier and I love the lines, shapes and details and that water drop on the lower left. This flower is further back. 
I can't get quite as close, even with the lens at 400mm. I still place it in the centre of the frame. It too has such a beautiful shape. However, in the edit I decided to crop it and place the flower off centre, with a large lily pad framing the flower in the background. This crop also helps to show more detail on those gorgeous petals. The sun began peeking out of the clouds now and then, which made the dragonfly wings glisten in the light. And now the butterflies and insects are beginning to come out again after the rain. This time of year we see so many of these skippers, I love their big eyes. Look carefully, do you see who is hiding under there? I began to walk out of the garden when I thought, if there is one little jumping spider, there has to be others. So I looked first on some hard surfaces and sure enough, another little one was enjoying this lamp. Watch how it makes a silk drag line right before jumping. If they jump at me, I can stand still and wait and the spider returns right back to where it jumped from. So I can have another try at getting a photo. This one was very jumpy. So I left it alone and started searching for another one. This time I looked for them on some big elephant ear plants. This leaf had three little jumping spiders and a couple of other small spiders as well. I'm using my phone for these with the little macro lens attached. First I was using the moment macro lens but then I saw this teeny tiny jumping spider and quickly changed from the moment lens to an holoclip macro lens with greater magnification. The reason why I use my phone for jumping spiders instead of my big camera is because the ones I tend to come across are very small and I can get right up close to them with my phone and can often get a sharp shot faster than trying to focus on something so tiny with a big lens. I quite enjoyed watching this little one for a while, and then it was time to go home. Thanks so much for coming along with me, see you next time!